And this week we're talking recording guitars. Because I know that many of you are guitarists, or maybe you are aspiring guitarists, or maybe you play guitar but you've never recorded your guitar, well we're going to take it from scratch here. I'm going to give you everything I've learned recording guitars in the last five years in the home studio, what you need to get started, and how you can record your best sound. The number one question to ask yourself when recording guitars is, what are you recording? Are you recording an electric guitar, a bass guitar, an acoustic guitar? Because that is going to decide how you actually record it because there's a few different ways that you can record guitars. You can record direct, which means plugging your guitar directly into an interface, or you can use a microphone and either mic up your acoustic guitar if you're an acoustic player, or mic up the cabinet, the amplifier, so that you can actually record your amp sound. Neither way is good, bad, or otherwise, and that's probably the key point to keep in mind about guitar guitar recording like everything in music there is no right wrong yes no black white it is this big giant murky ball of gray and you just need to work out your tone and the best way to capture your tone in your music recordings to make them sound the best that they can so all of that being said let's jump in and talk about some of the things you need so let's pop up on the screen here some uh, resources and some visual prompts yes this is my new guitar no, no it's not really this is a guitar that i've been coveting at the moment the uh, the american uh, telecaster the butterscotch blonde with maple fingerboard uh only in 1500 us so that's probably like four four mil australian or something like that <laughs> our dollar's really bad no these are about two and a half three grand here in australia um so yeah it, it's 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 an investment and uh, we'll see we'll see if i actually buy one uh, i might be a present to myself it is nearly father's day uh, if anyone wants to uh, anyone wants to jump on there i'm pretty sure you can just ship one across the pond it'll be fine uh so if you're recording an electric guitar there's a few things that you need to keep in mind to do that now in the past people recording electric guitars uh, in the home studio they would cringe at the idea of recording it direct and using artificial amp simulators these days for most folks in the home studio I think that's the way to go. I find it a lot easier and definitely get a lot better tone much quicker using some of the cool amp simulators. And if you want to check those out, I've done a heap of videos about guitar recording here on the channel. You can check those out down in the description or after this show. So if you're using an electric guitar like this beautiful Fender, you need to plug it into something to record it. And here's a few options that you have to plug in to. Uh, this is the one that I use. This is the Steinberg UR22C. So so what this one has, you can see here across the front here, we've got these two, which are mic or line inputs. And this one here is actually an instrument input. So you can actually set it to either be a line input or an instrument input. And the beauty of this is that you get really good high quality inputs into here as well as really good quality output as well. So this is a 24-bit uh, interface, which is important because it means you're going to get the best optimal sound quality. And it's got uh, balanced TRS outputs, meaning that you can plug it out to monitor speakers and get the best highly shielded sound. You're not going to get interference and noise. And guitar recording is a battle against interference and noise. If you've used some of the other things we'll talk about, you'll know what I mean. So that's why the first thing I recommend is if you've if you've got $200 burning a hole in your pocket, grab yourself one of these. This is, to, in my view, the ultimate guitar recording rig. And I'll tell you why. It'll, it'll expand out as we go through because the other thing this has is a mic preamp as well which becomes important if you do want to switch over and use one of the other techniques we're going to talk about in this video if you're starting out and you want something a little bit simpler easier cheaper whatever you want uh, here is something that I would recommend this is it's like an iRig so the iRig uh, the, the other way that you can connect your guitar is a guitar only interface so a dedicated guitar interface so the iRig the iRig Pro the iRig HD these are all options that you have but if you're starting out the reason I love this one is yes it's an analog input which means that it uses the uh, where's, where's the picture with it there it is it uses the uh, three and a half mil TRRS jack so you then plug that into your iPad your phone your laptop whatever it is and then you can actually record in and it's got on here as you can see it has a combo jack so you can plug in again your 
guitar or your microphone and you'll be able to record it. You've even got phantom power there for your uh, condenser microphones to power those up and you've got input gain as well. So it's a very compact all-in-one unit and it does a good job. You can see there it's like less than half the price of buying a digital full-on interface, but it's a good way to get started. And by the way, all of the things we'll be talking about here are on this one. This is where I cheated and got that, which is my gear guide over at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. And this is where you can go to to find out all of the things that I recommend. In fact, one that I've missed off of here is my iRig Pro IO. So let's just bring that one up here because this is something kind of in between those two. Here you go, $150 iRig Pro IO. This works with your Mac, your PC, your iPhone or your iPad out of the box, which is pretty handy. And if we have a look at what this one has, you can see on that end, there's your combo jack. And then, uh, does it show the side? Yeah, there you go. You've got a headphone jack there. So the things that you need when you're recording, you need the ability to plug in, and then you need the ability to plug headphones in so you can hear what you're recording. So that's why these are the devices that I recommend. You might be saying, Pete, uh, I don't want to go down the route of plugging my guitar in. I want to record that real guitar sound. Maybe I've got a guitar like this. This should look familiar. This is my current guitar, uh, the, the Taylor 110E, my acoustic guitar. What if you want to capture that acoustic? guitar sound. Well, of course, you can plug it in if it's an electric acoustic like this one using the preamp, and that's what I do when I'm recording live shows and things like that. But what if you want the actual sound of the guitar? Well, that's where you will need a microphone, and my mic of choice is this one here. Now, it doesn't have to be this one, the Audio-Technica AT2020, but this happens to be my go-to microphone. Why? Because it is just the best balance. It's a $100 microphone, and it's the best balance I've found of quality and price. It's It sounds much better than a $50 microphone, and I've said this before, it's kind of like a bottle of wine, is that when you go from a $50 to a $100 microphone, there is a significant difference. But when you go from a $100 microphone to a $500 microphone, you really got to be an audiophile to tell significant difference. There, it is there, but you're probably not going to notice it in the home studio that much. So that's why I like this one. This is good because if you've got your acoustic guitar, you can set it up and I'll give you some tips about the actual recording in a moment. You can set it up to record. And if you've got an electric guitar, you can still put it in front of your guitar amp cabinet and get some good quality recordings there as well. The other option that I have here would be this one. This is the classic, right? This is the Shaw SM57. You can hammer a nail in with this sucker. Uh, this is a solid microphone. This is great for your electric guitars. I don't love it for acoustic guitars. I find that it doesn't have uh, as much gain, so you tend to have to turn up your input gain. There's a tip there. We'll be talking about that in a sec. Turn up your input gain on your, on your microphone preamp to get enough sound, and then you introduce noise. Whereas if you grab something like the Audio-Technica, again, same price, it's got a lot more highly defined sound. You get a lot more sound detail and a lot more uh, noise, not noise, good noise, <laughs> sound going in there, a lot more crystal clear sound going into that. That can mean that if you're putting it in front of a guitar amp, you might get too much of that. It might be too crunchy, it might be too high end, but for uh, for recording acoustic, I love it. So yeah, in a perfect world, you grab one of them and one of them, Oop, not that one, <laughs> one of them and one of them. And that's actually what I use in the studio here. I've got an AT2020 I use for vocals and acoustics, and then I've got an SM57 if I ever want to mic up some louder instruments, then that is a better choice for those instruments. That is, uh, that is most of what I wanted to show here. So why don't we move into a few tips. So you've got, your, you've got your electric or you've got your acoustic and you want to record it. What are some tips for getting a good sound? Well, if you're plugging in, if you're using something like this, you'll notice here we've got something called input gain. And whatever you're using, it'll have some sort of input gain, either on the hardware side or the software side. This is the one thing that I see folks get wrong with guitar recording, and that is putting your input gain either too loud or too soft. It's usually too loud. People often don't like the tone of their guitars that they get because they set their input gain until they're hitting 100%. The problem is if you do your sound check with your guitar and you're hitting 100%, when you sort of go to actually play, if you dig in a little bit more, guess what? You're going over 100%. You're actually clipping. And digital clipping or distorting is going to sound terrible in your mixes. So golden rule of input gain is set it so that that little peak light that you can see there, that little light up the top there, never comes on while you're playing. Really dig in. Just play the chorus. Play the loudest part of the song. Really dig in. Make sure you're not peaking. And if you're checking your meters on your software, 
50 to 75% is the range you want to be in. If you're at 80 and 90%, chances are you are going to dig into something in a chorus, you're going to go up over 100. And that's where you get that crunchy, distorted, clippy sound that is going to sound quite horrible. So please check that out. The another, number two tip that I'll give you is the distance from the recording device. Now, this obviously doesn't matter if you're, if you're going direct because you've got a direct cable in there. But if you're recording, especially your acoustic, or if you're recording your guitar cab, keep in mind that people don't listen to their guitars by putting their guitar right up to the sound hole or right up to the neck. So again, what I see sometimes is folks are miking their guitar as if they're almost trying to like hit it. Same with your, your vocal mic. Like you, a lot of people try to eat the microphone when they're recording vocals. You actually want to have a decent distance to get most of the sort of vocal sounds you want. It's the same with your guitar. Think about how how sound forms. You need sound to actually have char a chance to actually form its waves. If you're too close up, it's hitting that microphone before it's actually developed those waves. So yeah, you, it's a balancing act again. Too far away, you get too much echo and too much room noise. Too close, it's too intense. Those nice juicy waveforms don't have a chance to form. So that's tip number two, especially with your acoustics, but it's the same with miking a guitar amp cab. Uh, and the final tip I'll give you is compression. So whatever you're recording with guitar, guitar is a very dynamic instrument. And sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want the really loud bits and the really quiet bits, but sometimes you want to level that sucker out. And that's where compression comes in. And when you've recorded the guitar, if it's not quite sounding right, throwing a compressor plug in on there and just dialing up a little compression, it can actually, instead of being lumpy like this, it can just sort of push down the tops and you get this nice even level performance. It's why compressor pedals are used by so many people playing live because it actually sets that sound as a uniform sound. And it means if you've played a, played a chord a little bit quieter or a little bit louder, it's not going to stand out quite as much. So there you go. That is my, uh, my guitar tips. What do you think? Have you got your own guitar-related tips? If you do, please drop a comment or a question down below. Not a question. If you've got your own guitar recording tips, would love to hear from you.